Escadela Cata, Embrace Cadilla Shabacata Prendegia, Shadigades, Cadeba, Mantebra, Kepro Shabicatos Cadilla Cata, Medebaratusia, the opening of the eyes, Ginas Cabadi Cataliata, Grantes Cadeba Dida Cataya. If you cannot find your parallel in scripture, it is not the Spirit of God training you. Because his patterns are consistent. I'm showing you the benefit of coming to the house of God. That in experiencing the power of God is to the end that you be formed. That you can see the mold you are assuming in the spirit. So you know that I just be, I began as a prayer warrior. Just with a passion for prayer. But as you sojourn and as you dwell in the house of God. You will begin to find your expression in scripture. I'm looking like Anna the prophetess. I'm looking like Elijah. I am looking like Daniel. What is this combination of prayer and leadership? What is this combination of prayer and governmental authority? Why am I a man of prayer and yet I have an unusual access to systems and structures? That is Daniel forming. You will always find your formation in scripture. Let me give you the last one so we'll pray. Let me give you the last one so we pray. Be seated for a minute, please. The house of God must be a house of prayer for all nations, must be a place of revelation, understanding, and transformation, must be a place where men access help and strength from God, must be a place where men experience the power and the glory of God. The final requirement according to scripture for any place and any gathering of God's people to be called the house of God is that it must be a place where men can experience the love of Jesus in a practical way. The love of Jesus in a practical way. James 1.27 the love of Jesus in a practical way. James chapter 1, please, and verse 27. James 1, 27. Here's what it says. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. This dimension of God's love and kindness must be captured in any gathering of God's people for that place to be called the house of God. In Acts chapter 4 from verse 34, I believe, there is an apostolic model that is given to us. Please give us Acts chapter 4, 35, 34 and 35. Yes, thank you. It says, neither was there any among them that lacked. Please look up. For as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the prizes of the things that were sold. Verse 35, and laid them down at the apostles' feet and distribution. This is really the point. Now we don't have to do it the way they did it those days to go and sell your land and houses. The idea is that distribution was made unto every man according as he had the need. Now, the church is not supposed to solve everybody's financial problem. It's not supposed to endorse carelessness. But there must be a dimension of God's love and mercy. This is a house of mercy. And it's impossible to capture the word mercy without the word give. Are we together? A merciful person must be a giver. The Bible tells us that mercy is a seed. If you show mercy, you will receive mercy. I know... With all due respect, great assemblies who do well, preach well, but when it has to do with the ministry of mercy. And I think sometimes we men and women of God, we make these mistakes. We become very thoughtless over the needs of the people. And our focus is just to build church. And I'm saying this because I'm speaking to the body of Christ. It matters that we pastor God's people with the heart. The Bible says, and David shepherded them with 
the integrity of his heart and with the skillfulness of his hands. When it has to do with your heart, you must have a heart that is thoughtful. Hallelujah. I have learned in leadership that people do not care how much you know until they know how much you care. Learn from Jesus. Jesus is done preaching in a very powerful crusade. Great miracles. And he looked upon the people and he was moved with compassion. And he said, you know what? Let these people sit down. They will have to eat before they go. They said, Jesus, don't get us into trouble here. There are about 5,000 men aside, women and children. Where are we going to get the supplies? And he insisted until the people were fed. Doesn't mean direct feeding. The idea is that there must be a component in church that ministers to the needs of people. You see, faith is gradual. Faith is a process. Are we together? God works miracles. He gives speed, but he's not a magician. It is line upon line, precept upon precept. I prayed to God many years ago, and it's still my prayer up until today, that God will grant me compassion, that I don't just want to be a powerful man of God. I also want to be a compassionate man of God. That lion and lamb must be captured in your life. If you are a lamb alone, they will kill you. If you are a lion alone, you will kill every lamb. You need to be both lion and lamb. A lion that is a lamb will not kill a lamb, even though he's a lion. Because he knows what it means to be a lamb. A lamb that is also a lion will respect the strength of the lion and not take the lion for granted. Knowing that it has capacity to kill it. You need to be both lion and lamb. When you are lamb alone, you become a victim eternally. When you are a lion alone, you will victimize people without knowing. That lion and lamb dimension is important. Are we together now? Yes. So I don't want to be the man of God walking miracles, doing great things, and then I have a most active and faithful member having to trek home and not even knowing how he gets home. Doesn't matter whether his family dies. Doesn't matter whether his family eats. No, it matters. Did you hear what I said? It matters. I'm praying that God will raise people from within this church. Aside from the compassionate assignment of the church, that God will raise people who will reflect the benevolence of the kingdom. People who are raised... Are we together? Have you heard about a woman in the Bible called Dorcas? Did you ever read about Dorcas? Expressions of love in terms of welfare and hospitality is a major component. It's a major factor that makes a place to be called church. Compassion expressed in love and care and giving. I have trained my people that no matter how large the ministry is, at least at a workforce level, nobody should be sick and down and depressed without me not knowing within 48 hours. It doesn't matter where. That is the power of systems and structures. People don't care what you know. I repeat to you again, until they know that you care. Hallelujah. And I thank God for a very visionary church like this. And I hope that this becomes a model for many people. Care about the people who serve. Are we together now? Yes. I remember one time, a dear son in the gospel, they were returning pastor from a, a crusade. And these guys just surrounded them and kidnapped like six people. And I was doing something when I was called and they said, this is what has happened. And, you know, he was so broken and he said, they had kidnapped my people. I said, my God, from where again? From a crusade coming? And, you know, they, you know how these people behave like mad people. They just give all kinds of ungodly amounts. Bring this before this time otherwise. And they will do it truly. Because their hearts have been seared. They, are, they don't have a conscience. And I sat down, I thought to myself, I said, but these faithful people, they risk their lives to go and stand by this man of God and they preached the gospel, saved souls on their way going. It was not a making of theirs. The Bible says, withhold not good from him that it is due when it is within your power. And don't delay. Someone can die. And I thought about it. It was, it was a very huge amount. 
and we tried to, you know, make calls, see what we could do. But at the end of it, I said, no. There are mothers there with children. There are people there. I should not waste the destiny of a family when it is within your power. I said, whatever it is within our power, glory be to God. The long and short is that they were able to come out of that place. And to me, of course, you will feel the pain of such an amount leaving you. But the consolation is it validates the fact that truly you have demonstrated to people that it is profitable to be planted in the house of God. There are people today who only got admission because they came to church. There are people who got jobs because they came to church. Listen, we need to rewrite that narrative that makes church look like a nuisance to society, a nuisance to civilization. Are we together now? The church is not all about collecting money from people. Unfortunately, wrong narratives that are sold around. The church is a place of tremendous blessing. Tremendous blessing. Tremendous blessing. Tremendous blessing. Sometimes humility too must be guided because it is, it is unguided humility that does not let the world see how much the church is doing. You know, in a bid to want to really cover a lot of things, the only thing sadly that they see is when the offerings have been collected. But they do not see the lives that have been changed. So it's good to be humble. But where the world must know what the church is doing, we must let it know, let's, let's make it known and without any sense of prejudice. Hallelujah. Are we learning? The house of God. The household of David, if this place must be and remain the house of God, these are the things that must happen. That you must be a people of prayer, you must be a people of word, help must be found in all its ramifications, you must be exposed to the power of the Holy Spirit, and finally, that the love of Jesus must be distributed, not just from pastor to the people, but among yourselves. Imagine that you are done with service, even though I know that society, unfortunately, has become a very harsh place even to provide help. You can provide help and pay for it. But then it's better to take the risk loving Jesus anyway. That after service, you can see someone and say, can I give you a lift somewhere? And the person says, wow, I came to household of David. And for that person, it's not about the lift. It's about the thoughtfulness. A reflection of the pastor's ideology which is a reflection of God's thinking. And that person will go and bring 10 more people, like the woman at the well. Remember? Said, come see a man. Every time people see good things, they don't keep quiet. Let me tell you, they will always invite someone, even if it's their loved one. The benevolence of the saints is important. It translates to growth and increase. When people experience love, in addition to power and word, they will be glad to call everyone to say, you know what, I found a home. Not just a place to visit. I found a home. So our little children back home, once service is done, I usually, before I attend to anybody, as many of them, they line up, they hug me and give me letters before I start counseling. Even if I'm not going to counsel that day, I must spend time with the children. So once we're about sharing the grace, we see all, that's their own koinonia service. Of course, they pray, do their thing, but once the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, they are happy, and nobody would dare stop them. No. They are more important to me than anybody. It doesn't matter whether it's the president of any nation. Because adults, their future has been known, but the children... <laughs> Hallelujah. And let me tell you before we pray what I began to observe. Because of course, the children come from various families with various um, you know, levels of exposure. Initially, when I started this, some of the children, you could see that they didn't believe they belonged. But they noticed that the same generous hug, the same everything, the ones who can speak English or the cannot well-dressed or otherwise... And it began to change. They started making friends among themselves. They were happy. They noticed others were writing me letters. They would write everything. Wrong English. Draw love. I, I will receive it. Just you bring it for me. And I found out the other people started writing it too. 
he started building the confidence of the ones who felt they were outcasts. And they would now join the queue. And sometimes I would insist that the welfare should get a package for them. And I would be the one to hand it myself. Sometimes you see all of them coming, say, okay, I should bring my ears. They just wrote uh, common entrance. I say, you mean it? Did you pass? <laughs> you see, many of you would have been better if that's how you were raised. <laughs> look, at, look at the recovery you are having to go through right now as an adult. For some of you, the first person who said, I love you, was the most dangerous person who came to your life. <laughs> My time is exhausted. Oh, rest on.